Formula One has just showcased its latest developments in its onboard department, giving us a live broadcast within Fernando Alonso's helmet. But this isn't the first time Formula One have tried a live visor camera. The first was back in 2008 being tested at Brazil, before being used multiple times throughout the 2012 and 2013 season. Now visor cameras made a comeback a couple years ago, which properly started with IndyCar, first allowing drivers to actually use GoPros on their helmets, to then it being integrated as an actual helmet design where the camera would sit on the very top. So why didn't this IndyCar camera technology move to Formula 1 sooner? Well, it's kind of down to a couple of factors, and the main ones are to do with image clarity and positioning. Normal onboard cameras have a mechanism which can pull a roll of film over the lens which can clean the camera's vision. But because these cameras have to be super lightweight and easily destructible in case of a crash, they can't have that. And the issue IndyCar would find is that you'd start the race with a nice clean lens, but after a couple laps the image quality was getting worse and worse. And you might have noticed in the last two years IndyCar hasn't actually used a live visor camera in many of their races. And the reason for that it's simply just down to the new aero screen. The aero screen is now blocking its camera view because remember, the camera sits on top of the helmet. So although before it gave you quite a nice wide angle, that's now completely blocked by the aero screen. So most of the visor camera stuff you've probably seen from IndyCar in the last couple of years, as well as other championships like World Endurance, have been recorded using this, which is a cam box, which effectively is like a flat GoPro. Now this sits on the inside of your helmet at the very top and it looks through your visor. However, it can only be used during testing and practice. It can't be used during the race because it's not being properly homologated but this device cannot be live broadcasted. So if you can't put the camera on top of the helmet and you can't use a device like CamBox, where can you actually place the camera? Now this is where Formula E and Bell helmets come into the conversation. For the last two years, Formula E has been working with Bell Racing to get this tech to work and it's the exact same that Formula One just produced. In this series, it's called Driver's Eye and it has an eight millimeter camera that sits on either the left or right hand side of the helmet. And together with its lens and image sensor board, it only weighs 2.5 grams. It's positioned inside the helmet with enforced padding directly next to the driver's eye. You can now see where the name comes from. And it's the smallest camera currently used in motorsport. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that from the beginning it looked really good because it really, really didn't. To begin with, the video signal and color was really poor. The highlights were so bright that you couldn't make out any of the sky and the angles weren't aligned properly. But because this camera technology was being broadcasted at each race, we can now actually go back and see the quality increasing each time and seeing those small little corrections and basically becoming a perfect testing bed for this. Now all of this tech isn't coming from Formula E, nor is it coming from Formula 1. It's actually coming from a company called Zero Noise, which is the electrical division part of Bell Racing Helmets. That's the reason why it's only been used in Bell Racing Helmets so far, and they develop not only the helmets, but also the radio communications, the video signals, the cameras, they develop it all in-house. And so that is one of the reasons why it's taken so long to come from Formula E to Formula 1, because you want the best looking image to the biggest audience to appreciate it. But it also comes down to a safety standpoint. So during this time, Bell Helmets have been doing FIA crash testing, seeing how much load can go onto the side of the helmets, plus have it so that no heat is generated while the camera is operational. So after it's all been approved by the FIA, you then just got to find a team and a driver who are willing enough to actually have this broadcasted out there to the millions, because for Fernando Alonso's case, we all saw everything that was on his dashboard, which I think other teams might find really interesting. So you can kind of understand why it kind of took a while for the tech to come over. But now let's actually talk about how the actual image from his helmet actually comes onto your TV screen. Well, usually there's a radio cable, which when the driver is getting back into the cockpit, a mechanic will plug into the car, which sits just behind them and has a quick release mechanism. And now with the camera, they have two cables to connect to the car. And this is purely a video signal and does not transmit any audio as there's no microphone in the helmet. All of that audio is taken from the microphones installed on the car already for the existing onboards. Once connected to the multi-core cable, which carries both the audio and visual, it goes up to the top of the roll hoop where the T camera sits, and inside is the antenna which sends out the live feed. Now, different broadcasters and series use different ways to transmit feeds, but in Formula One, they use a 10 gigahertz Wi-Fi based system, which has an incredible quality, but has quite a short range. So effectively, you need to have loads of antenna kits dotted all around the track, so that at any one time, one antenna is always collecting a signal from a car. Now earlier I mentioned that we've been able to see the clear improvements in Formula E with this tech and this includes having full telemetry control over the image. So this means you can fix the camera's iris and its focus, it means you can also control the electric shutter and its colour control and the main reason for the colour control is many drivers like myself have a tinted visor and if I was to shine the camera just through here everything would look a bit blue and green so you need a colour control to 
counterbalance that so everything looks normal to the viewer. And the last thing about this camera is that it's shooting at 1080 resolution at 50 frames per second. And the reason it's at 50 frames per second is because of how the Formula One show is broadcast. You know, in the UK, we watch everything at 25 frames per second. It's also known as PAL. And as Formula One has to cater to all the broadcasters everywhere, they film everything in 50 frames. So then they can always down convert to other broadcasters like here in the UK. But that's also the reason why everything on their YouTube channel is in 50 frames per second, because the more frames you have, the clearer the image.